Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at chapter 2 of Peopleware. It's called Make a Cheeseburger, Sell a Cheeseburger. Chapter 2 is all about the difference between a development environment versus a production environment. In particular, it's contrasting them and explaining why one should think about their development teams, their, their software engineering teams, as working in a development environment rather than a production one. So what do those, what do those terms mean here? Essentially, you can think of a production environment as what we first encountered in the Industrial Revolution. We're talking about standard processes. We're talking about people being interchangeable, like, like pieces of machinery being interchangeable and so on. I used to work in a coffee shop, for example, and I can tell you that was a production environment. Yeah, and, and even for people who had very customized drinks, we had the making of it down to a science, to a process. And that's a good thing too, because in a production environment, the goal of everyone is to get as much done and out the door as possible. And so that works really well for products that are assembled by a standard process and so on, but software does not fall into that category itself. In fact, it's extremely experimental and non-linear in its creation. And so you need to treat people who do that more like scientists than baristas. So in that vein, right, in the, in the vein of treating people as scientists rather than baristas, it's important to allow for people making mistakes. Just like a lot of scientists' experiments fail, a coder will be trying a bunch of different things. Some of them will work, some of them won't. And that's just the world we live in. In fact, the authors even go so far as to encourage people to share and solicit stories from their employees of times when they failed and what they learned uh, you know, from those experiences to destigmatize the idea of failure on, on the team. Going back to the analogy of production versus development for a minute, let's examine the idea of interchangeability. So in a production environment, like your coffee shop example from before, when one part of the operation is done, you just swap in another piece, you just swap in another person, and the machine keeps on ticking without really any hiccup at all, hopefully. So like, and for example, if you've seen the Charlie Chapman, Charlie Chaplin movie, Modern Times, you can kind of see this, this thing, this kind of thing play out in a factory. I actually haven't seen the whole thing myself, but I've seen a clip and it's, well, you know, it's it's not not the place I'd want to be in myself, nor would I want to be responsible for putting others there. And the big lesson is don't treat your development team like they're just turning wrenches on an assembly line or pulling shots at an espresso machine. Now, you know, noble endeavors, though though they may be, though they may be, and it's, you know, baristas and factory workers are very important parts of society, but it's not analogous to software engineering at all. And people People aren't interchangeable, uh, you know, in those in those contexts, right? And I think that that's an unfortunate phenomenon that I've seen, and probably you've seen, you know, in our era is the dehumanization of the worker. And I don't even just mean in like production environments. Uh, I've seen it on development teams where the HR manager would talk about quote unquote having wrecks and saying phrases like, you know, quote, we have ten open heads or some you know nonsense like that. Like, well, you know, I mean, imagine an open head, you know, for one thing. Um, <laughs> but for another thing, you, you know, you hear that and you're taken aback and kind of ask yourself what the company thinks of you and your team as cattle, right? Like heads, heads of cattle just walking around, like writing code for you. Like, is that, is that what they are? And, and maybe that is the case. Maybe that is the case. But you have a responsibility to not propagate that inhumanity yourself you know everyone is different and you as their teammate and possibly their manager should you know encourage someone to wear his funny hat you know encourage her to talk about some out of the ordinary hobby she does on the weekends you know try to encourage relationships between people and the group as a whole encourage people to express their individuality whatever that may be All right, so the authors talk about the concept of a project being in a steady state and why that's such a bad thing. The goal of a project is to be completed and you move on to the next one. 
So if you're making your people experiment with this link or that link or this color versus that color on the website for a month, something something bigger might be wrong. Something bigger might be wrong. And you know, if you're fixated on what color this link should be or you know what this wording should be I've, I've been there this isn't a theoretical example if you're if you're fixating on that you might be the the problem might not be there you know um, if you find yourself in that place something something else is probably going on and if you find yourself there you need to take a look around and then you need to take a look inward uh, the the problem might not be in your stars but in yourself and one of the gems one of the gems in this book one of my favorite observations overall uh, that I've that I've seen in here is the idea that someone can be and should be encouraged to be a catalyst for the team or the project so this is someone who gets along with the folks around him who brings out the best in people who brings up the mood and facilitates communication the best quote from the book so far, or at least in my opinion, is this. Someone who can help a, pro a project to gel is worth two people who just do work. Someone who can help a project to gel is worth two people who just do work. Okay? Write that on your mind. Write that on your heart. You know, go out and be that person. Because that's huge. That's huge. That's way more important than a link color. That's way more important than a button that goes to this page versus that page where it's slightly different, you know. Make make your team gel. You know, be be that connector. Now the the last section of the chapter talks about time spent on the execution of a task. Should it be 100% of your day? Should it be, you know, whatever percent of your day? Well, it definitely shouldn't be 100% of your day. And if you're a barista, you know, you're not even making coffee 100% of your shift, but it's even less so as a developer that you're just executing on tasks. People should be encouraged to spend a lot of time figuring out if something could be done better if it was done differently than the last time. They should be experimenting, they should be reading, having lunch with each other, and so on. They should even be asking, this is, you know, you should you should encourage this in your people they should be asking if a thing should even be done at all you know i mean look around us mass surveillance is really flowering in the last couple decades and that's just rolling out the red carpet for some i don't know dystopian police state um and humans have opposable thumbs that allow us to dominate the planet and there's no telling what seemingly small thing we'll give to a robot that it'll allow it to dominate us so you know that's kind of a tangent but the point is we need to spend some time, you know, looking around us and reflecting and making sure that what we're doing is is right. That's all for chapter two. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you all in the next one.